The chanting for Khalistan, a Sikh homeland, is now a regular part of many Gurdwara ceremonies. But behind this political campaign, there is a spiritual rebirth, and it's the young Sikhs who are at the forefront. Manjit Kaur recently took Amrit, or nectar, and became a fully baptized Sikh. She now wears the symbols of her faith, the five Ks, Ganga, Kara, Kacha, Karpan, and Ges. I look after my hair now, because it's very meaningful in Sikhism, the hair. Um, I wear a turban to protect it. I don't keep it loose anymore. And because the, the hair is very important in Sikhism, they must never cut the hair. Because we believe it's God's given gift, natural gift, we should keep it. It's a steel bracelet made of iron, you know. It's, it, it has a meaning of, when I put up my hand out to, to rob somebody or do something silly, you know, then it, it's important to me to remind me, my guru is telling me, teaching that I shouldn't do these things, it's bad. And also, it's, it means it's around all the way, it's, it's a meaning of, whole universal brotherhood, we are all same, we are all people all same, we are all brothers and sisters. I used to be a westernized girl before, I used to have my hair cut and everything, I used to love getting dressed up, going out and everything, going out with friends, I used to have a lot of problems with my parents then because they didn't like it. And I used to love being, you know, listening to music, reggae, pop, whatever, going to films. Manjeet's rejection of Western values was not a sudden decision and it wasn't easy to make. She says she's done it partly because her life had become aimless, partly because it resolved a conflict of identity and mostly because of a spiritual need. I do care about the whole world. I do care what happens here and there. I do get involved in a lot of things, a lot of political things, a lot of everything that goes on, I'm more aware of my surroundings now, you know, I, I'm more caring, better person than I used to be. Before that, I couldn't care like, who, who, mother the old lady who doesn't, does, it doesn't bother me. Now I do, I, and I think about it, why do, how can I help people? I became baptised on a Basaki day, that was a holy, Sikh, holy day for Sikh people. And uh, before before I came baptized, I was uh, well. I had a haircut, and I used to drink, you know, go to pubs and stuff. What we do in Western culture, it just drives you away from your own culture. If you're a Sikh, you live like a Sikh, you die like a Sikh. What appeals to me about Sikhism is um, <coughs> you have a more free lifestyle. You can do what you what you like, and plus you can learn more about your religion. And uh, you don't, you don't go around, you know, looking at other women or anything like that. You, you stay in your community. You do your prayers daily, and well, it just changes your, changes your lifestyle altogether. Throughout Britain, Sikh youth, many of whom have never seen Punjab are embracing Sikhism and saying no to Western culture. At this Gurdwara, special classes to cater for this religious demand have recently been set up. Gurnam Singh is the education secretary. I am responsible for primarily uh, running the school which we have here. Now the school is, is quite a large school. We have something like 450 pupils aged from uh, 5 up to 18. Uh, which operates at the weekends. So it's really devising a uh, curriculum, devising uh, content for the, the lessons, which incorporate both Punjabi teaching as well as the Sikh uh, ideologies and principles. I think the youngsters are really pleased now that uh, after so many years, they are being catered for in the Gurdwaras. It would, be, would have been unknown for anybody to give a speech in English, you know, specifically for the young Sikhs. Now it is a common fact and uh, this has really attracted the youngsters to the Gurdwara. The first generation of Sikhs arrived in Britain in the 60s and 70s, mainly from the rural areas of Punjab. 
Determined to achieve economic success, they soon neglected their religion and culture. And in many cases, the second generation was left without clear guidance. I think the elder generation, in terms of teaching Punjabi, the religious culture and so on and so forth, uh, there are a number of factors in why they did not pursue that kind of thing. One is about their level of awareness, their level of education. And another is their feeling that we are in Britain and if our youngsters can get the education, the language, the skills to operate in Britain, then they don't need, they can become successful, they don't need Sikhism or their traditional cultures. In Sikhism, and I think it's true in other religions as well, that the religious practice um, was, became rather mechanistic, that the elder generation would go to the temple, would um, go to the mechanics of worship in Punjabi, and the youngsters would very often feel totally left out. They wouldn't understand what was going on. It became more of a sort of social club for the elders. The youngers, youngsters had been left out. They weren't very keen in the first place. And so they went into the pubs and to Western culture. They probably felt that they'd be accepted as true British. They soon found they weren't. And they had this uh, feeling of alienation. Parts of the Golden Temple were ankle deep in used cartridge cases when the army finally fought their way in. And the militants it was the raid on the Golden head. Temple, the known as Operation Blue Star, which proved to be the turning point for Sikh youth in Britain. The Golden Temple was stormed by the Indian army and there was tremendous destruction. The Kaltak, the holy um, building in the Golden Temple was destroyed and many of the priceless relics of Sikhism were destroyed. And this was sent a tremendous shockwave throughout the uh, Sikh community in India and abroad. Um, people in this country who had, who had no interest in religion began to feel that it was something very close to them that had been hurt and they began to look once again at their religion. The night was tired. I couldn't sleep all night. You know, I, I, I can't explain what happened, but I, you know, I'm mystified why I, I've changed. Why did it hurt me when I was eight years? Why, why do I care, you know, for something like that? But it, it really shocked me. You know, it hurt me really deep. And I just died then and there. The day was tacked. The old man just died with it. The Golden Temple raid for some youth meant an immediate return to Sikhism. For others, it was just the beginning. It made them think about who they were and what they had achieved in Britain. When it comes to employment or housing or being harassed on the street, they are still harassed and seen as foreigners. And one of the things that, that's happening now is that young Sikhs are saying, well, if we're going to get treated like this for behaving as if we were Britons in the traditions, because most of the community, particularly in Bradford, now speak the, with an accent of Yorkshire. Yeah? And they are saying, well, if we're going to get treated like this because of our skin color or other uh, beliefs about us, then why don't we embrace our own culture, traditions and become and have strength in and pride in our own identity? The revival in Sikh culture looks set to stay. More and more young Sikhs will be wearing the five Ks. And the saffron turban is likely to become a common sight in the Asian communities. As I've got my own identity now, anybody can tell that, yes, well, he's, he's a Sikh. Now Sikh and Singh, there's a difference. Singh is a name. I mean, like, uh, if I, when I had hair cut anything, right, I was a Singh then. But now, as I've baptized, took, I've taken the Amrit, and I belong to the Kalpurk Forge, right? That's a holy army. Now I'm a Sikh. <laughs>